What we're discussing here today is becoming the plumber in your own practice, okay? So how to remove blockages in your practice in traffic flow. So this is a really huge topic. You know, we often, we are of the mindset as a technician, starting our own business, coming in, we're coming into the business and we think we need to be able to process the work. We need to be the one um, reconciling transactions or how many payrolls can we do? How many tax returns can we do? But of course, as you're all aware, when you join WISE, we're about building the machine that does the tax returns, that does the payroll, that makes the widgets. And if once we follow that along that path, we start to encounter challenges. You know, our, our firm and our teams and our employees may not necessarily do it to the same level of effectiveness as you are where you may be 100%, they may be only be performing at 80%, where you might think something is common sense and obvious to your team, it isn't so obvious. And we're here to discuss how to manage that. What things do we have to have in place to enable uh, your team to be robust enough to be able to handle the problems that uh, come along the way? What sort of preventative measures and foundational things you need to make sure that you have in place. It's a good chance to just check this off on that today, right? And see uh, what you have in your firm and what you could uh, be able to implement. Uh, and also better ways to react, okay? It's often we ideally uh, would not like to be reacting to everything, but when it happens and we talk about the 80-20 rule. And here we're discussing about the 80%, uh, that's going to help prevent a lot of this and the plumbing and how to troubleshoot those issues in your firm. This month, we're all talking about design and it's really talking about how we're going to build an extraordinary system so that you only need to um, staff it with ordinary people as opposed to having an ordinary system and requiring yourself to have extraordinary people. And this is um, absolutely key uh, in order to have a business that could run without you or at least one that isn't going to make you a prisoner in it. Okay, so I covered a little bit of this already and some of the major challenges that we see here at Wise Mentoring is there seems to be a correlation of as your firm grows, as you plug in more clients, as you add in more staff, things become a lot more heavy. It becomes a lot more complicated and there's a correlation between pain and growth. Okay. Owners such as yourself start to resent the fact that as I'm growing this firm, it's just causing more pain. And that's a huge barrier to growth. Okay. Uh, nothing's, you're not going to be motivated to go out there and continue to canvas your services out there on the market, uh, talking to your clients and wanting to service them. If every time you do that, sure enough, your sales are increasing, but who's the one needing to deliver the work? Who's the one needing to go and follow up and chase up and badger your team or badger yourself or the clients are badgering you to get it done. It's pain that comes with a growing firm. And here at WISE, we want to educate you in these tools, okay, that are going to decouple that, all right? We're going to be able to discuss some foundational things here today that ideally, as your firm grows in revenue, it's going to allow you to be able to withdraw from it rather than add more cement to the prison that's going in around you, okay? So understand that as your firm grows, the level of traffic and the volume of traffic increases. We want to be able to show you the techniques that allow you to manage that most effectively, okay? So a couple, uh, a bit of a brief. Uh, on the, the two major tools that we're going to be um, covering here today that you'll be able to take away with. And, and that is, and we're going to be coming back to this every now and then. Firstly, it's the traffic quadrant, okay? And just a bit of an uh, intro and a brief, and then Jamie 
uh, you're going to have a chance to share some practical uh, applications of this, uh, especially from your own firm at Sky and your dealings with um, other firms where we're coaching. So we talk here a lot about traffic. Okay. When we think of our firm, we think there are so many places that work comes in from. We think it comes in from emails, letters. We do marketing. We're doing social media. We're trying to train people. In our mind, there are like a million different things. And that seems very complex and complicated. But at WISE, we're about making the complex things simple. Okay. And we have two categories uh, that we summarize and categorize the sort of traffic that comes into the firm into, all right? That being communication traffic and production traffic. And that's divided up into higher level traffic and low level traffic. So just a bit of an intro. By communication traffic, we're talking about all the uh, activities involved with managing the client's expectations, okay? Uh, we're talking about activities involved in uh, advising the clients, okay? So it might be emailing, it might be phone calling, it might be physical meetings, but anywhere where you're interacting with the client in order to be able to discover what they need or be able to offer and educate the client on the services that could help them best, or even when the client's coming to you and asking, where is my work up to? It's just, it's been so long. We classify all of this under communication traffic. And under communication traffic, it's high level and low level, okay? So high level traffic, we're talking about the activities that occur with our A and B class clients. And thus, it sits with our senior client manager, okay? And for the lower level traffic, um, generally with the C and D class clients, we have this um, assigned over to the assistant client manager, all right? So, the other, the second type of traffic that we're looking at is production traffic. And production traffic is all about activities that are getting it done and getting it right, okay? So who in your team is concerned about this? That is the senior production manager, okay? Their job is to make sure all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. Because once the job leaves their hands after their review or perhaps their finalization, the client managers are entrusting their senior production manager that it is technically correct. And the senior production manager is doing that production traffic at a higher level. And they're working together with their team of accountants and bookkeepers in order to get it from zero to 90 or zero to at least 99 or 95% as fast as they can. And just a bit of a clarification, not all emailing and calling and physical meetings are considered communication traffic. So for example, if a bookkeeper had to go and ask uh, a client, say, for a missing piece of information, we're not so strict that it has to come through the client manager. In our eyes, that's still part of just getting the job done, okay, and getting it right. So a bit of intro there, so we're all on the same page. And of course, that all fits in within this deep and narrow team structure. Okay, and this deep and narrow team structure, it's made up of this senior client manager and assistant client manager that you saw in the previous slide. They're handling the communication traffic. The flow of traffic begins with them and it flows down to the senior production manager who is able to manage the production traffic with their team of grinders or production personnel. Okay, and if we get this right, if we can imagine a plumbing and water uh, in our business, if this team structure is set up in this way, and we consider those two elements of traffic, it should be able to flow from the top to the bottom and the bottom managing up to the top, okay? And where we find blockages, where we find blockages, for example, perhaps a senior accountant is not trained to the level we need. Perhaps a senior production manager uh, is not doing the activities they are supposed to. Perhaps a senior client manager is hanging on to the work instead of delegating it down. This all results in water splashing back uh, onto essentially the owner's face, 
all right? And we want to be able to have the plumbing, plumbing run smooth and flowing through this team. And this flow is uh, what we're going to be going into today. And uh, that leads us to you, Jamie. Uh, you've uh, been able to implement this so well, and it's so deeply embedded, the idea of the quadrants, uh, the deep and narrow team structure among uh, many things. But you know, talk to us, Jamie, how at WISE you, you've been able to minimize blockages in your traffic and free yourself from your firm and focus on growing and just the leadership and mentorship and guidance of your firm. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. Um, yeah, look, I think um, the, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, yeah, I'm stuck for words. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I think, look, it's really about um, getting the right people doing the right work. So you can have all the team design set up, but unless you have the right people doing the right work, um, it's not going to work. And so a lot of the time people become control freaks mm. and they'll, they'll sort of hoard the information uh, or hoard the jobs that they're doing. And particularly most, of the, you know, most firms, you'll be growing, you'll be getting leads and you'll be getting referrals. So everyone has to grow with the firm. And so back sort of what you had in terms of the context of that, that tra traffic quadrant is making sure that, um, you know, the right people doing the right work. And at a fundamental point, um, you know, that the, the preparation of the bookkeeping of the bazers um, of the tax returns are done by, you know, the, the, the less experienced staff. Or, or the people that are actually doing the production work or the production team or the grinders, as we might call them. Um, so those people have to be doing that type of work. And where the problem lies is, is often that you'll get your most senior people trying to do that work. Um, and then, you know, and then, you know, you'll always, I always find it's guy, you know, often the most um, senior people are the most busiest people. You know, I don't know if everyone's found that as well. So, so it's a matter of growing with a firm, letting go. And, you know, one of the things Ed always used to say to me is push the, push the work down and build up the team. So you've got to be really conscious as a, of a leader that you can see uh, what type of work people are doing. And then having the ability to, you know, delegate that successfully. So you have to become really, really good at delegating and then teaching the whole team to delegate as well. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's never about perfection, this. You're dealing with people. So I always come back to that, you know, progress is more important than perfection. You just have to keep trying to, do, to move in the right direction. But if you're going to focus on perfection, you'll never, you'll never do anything. So, yeah, it, the biggest key is getting the right people uh, doing the right work. And, um, and, you know, that's the biggest point part of it but then also making making sure that you get the fab five set up to measure the outcomes like to measure the results of what the people are doing and then you know once you once you can see the fab five um it will be a direct reflection or a, or a mirror if you like of how well your team is working both in fees build in profitability um in whip um in debtors and all that and and the rest of the kpis so, you know, there's one, there's, so you've got to sort of close the circle with this. Once you get your teams organized and get, right, get the right people doing the right work, um, then closing the loop on measuring, measuring what they're doing. You know, one of the things we use at Sky when we need to drill down is, is uh, linked, linked reporting, for example, just as an example, um, to see what people's productivity is, to see what you know, what time that you're writing off. And it doesn't matter whether you're fixed fee or your time bill. And really just making sure that you've got that Fab Five dashboard working so that then you can understand where your business is heading from a financial, you know, management point of view. Mm. Um, you know, and it's, I'd like to hear from some of the members about what their problems are, you know, is, you know, yes. the, problem, the problem tends to be is, um, you know, I don't have enough time. You know, do I have, you know, and, you know, you know, and that's sort of part of that getting the team structure right. Um, and then also measuring 
how long it's taken to do things. You know, some some firms that I've worked with, um, you know, they have they have ample capacity, for example. So we do the capacity plan and they've got ample capacity. Um, however, then um, when you look at the financial results, um, they're not so good, you know, and, and like they have ample capacity, but everyone says they're busy. Everyone's flat out, you know, so we'll bet. So the key is, well, how long is it taking to do the jobs? Like where's the efficiency of the firm? And, you know, again, everyone probably hates timesheets, but you know, I think we've got 30 people at, at Sky and everyone does a timesheet. So it's bottom up management. Um, and then, you know, at a high level, at the Fab Five level, if things are going well or if they're not going well, at least you need the ability to, to drill down and to find out what's not working. And if you, if, you, if you track the Fab Five, it'll have a direct reflection on the performance of that team that we're looking at on the screen. That's right. The, it's, there are so many facets that have to come together, right, Jamie, to get this thing working right. We have to get them into the right seats. We have to give them the right targets to shoot at. We have to educate them on what scope each of these roles are, uh, they have to stay within. And it's not so much, sometimes a senior client manager, like you mentioned, is having difficulty wanting to delegate the work down. You know, all of a sudden uh, they came up from being a senior tax accountant and we're telling them that all mm. you have to worry about is communication traffic, but production traffic has to go down now. And they have a bit of a hard time doing that. 